Good morning guys from the beautiful city of Chester. Now, over the course of the next couple of days, I'm going to be taking several trips on the Northern Railway network. The first one is going to be from here, with Northern Railway, up to Leeds. And uh, from Leeds, I'm going to be taking another Northern Railway service along the beautiful, world famous and scenic picturesque settled Carlisle line. I'm really looking forward to that. I've never been on it before, by the way. And so that should be great. And it's not a bad day for it either. Now, when I get to Carlisle, I'm going to be taking another scenic railway. It's the Cumbrian coastline, again with Northern Railways, all the way down to Barrow in Furness, where I'm going to be stopping overnight. Well, now, tomorrow morning, I'm going to be taking another Northern Railway service down to Manchester Piccadilly and then I'm going to be heading back to Shrewsbury. So if I told you guys how much I paid for all this, I think you're going to be pretty amazed. It's a total mileage of about 360, 370 miles um, on the network and um, the total journey time of about nine and a half hours. So why don't you come with me, enjoy the views and let's go make a trip. I like Chester Railway Station, opened in 1848. It's one of those places with a real mixture of services. Uh, from the stunning North Wales coast over to Holyhead, uh, served by Transport for Wales and Avanti West Coast, uh, to the scenic rural line down to Shrewsbury. And in complete contrast, you also have the really handy urban Mersey Rail service up to Liverpool and the northern services towards Manchester and beyond. Yes, there really is something for everyone at Chester and as you can see there was plenty going on here today. And here is our train screeching into the Bay Platform 5. It's the 1025 service from Chester up to Leeds. It's a CAF three car class 195 train. And CAF, by the way, stands for Construzioni di Auxiliar di Ferrocarie. I think that's how it's pronounced, but please correct me if I'm wrong. It's a Spanish company who built the units between 2017 and 2020, a supply northern as they began to phase out the old Pacer units. Incidentally, although it says Northern Railway on the side of their trains, I'm not quite sure whether the company should be referred to by this name, or Northern Trains, or, or just Northern. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you have a definitive answer to this. On boarding, uh, well firstly I found the doors quite wide, and this was a reflection of the overall spaciousness of the interior. Uh, that is, uh, apart from right in the front, I thought. And I chose to sit here where, unusually, there was some table seating with two seats facing one seat on the left-hand side. And I think this must have been due to the access door for the cab. Uh, because of that, I did wonder whether the table seating would have been better placed maybe a couple of rows back. And looking down the length of the train, you, you'll see that the carriage is made up of a mixture of table and airline style seating in uh, a 2-2 configuration, as you would expect. Now the seats, in my opinion, they were pretty thin. Uh, we'll see how they go comfort-wise by the time I get to Leeds. Uh, and above the seats uh, was ample rack storage, uh, which ran the length of the train. And there were also TV screens showing our destination, plus the stops en route. Uh, well, we left Chester on time, and it's such a contrast, isn't it, to, to, to be on this train compared to the older Class 150 we'd left behind in the other bay platform. But I do like the 150s, but I was pleased to be on this newer and quieter train today. Anyway, it was time to sit back for a bit and enjoy the views.
we approached Manchester Victoria, which I must admit, it was not really how I remembered it from days gone by. I'm pretty sure that in the 1980s, when I was properly into trains and stuff, it would be full of class 40s, 45s and 47s, etc. All in passengers and freight, all over the Pennines and beyond. Anyway, I, I guess things have changed a little bit since then. As we left, uh, we would be sampling a little bit of that scenery, but first it was time to take a closer look at the interior of our train. And yeah, like I said, the seats were thin, but not particularly uncomfortable so far. I like the colour scheme, by the way, which went well with the fixed table. Uh, that was also sturdy and well designed. It was a good sized table as well. Uh, this could be to the detriment of larger customers who may find it a bit of a squeeze to get in and out, but generally speaking, legroom was sufficient both here and in the airline seats. Above the windows were the seat numbers and digital availability displays, and between the seats was a one conventional power socket only, and no USB sockets here, so remember to bring a plug. Now personally, I would have liked to have seen enough 3 pin and USB connectivity for all seats located at the side of the carriage. Right, so onto the customary loo review section, and as you can see here, the Class 195 has a large accessible toilet, which is right next to the accessible seating, so that's been really well thought out for starters. Um, inside we have the usual push-button door close with a latch locking mechanism for reassurance. And next to this is an illuminated alarm call button in case you need assistance. Uh, there's a large mirror above the sink and a laser guided tap below along with a soap dispenser and a working hand dryer. And remember not to drink the water kids. Uh, to the right of the sink were paper towels and a bin below to deposit them in. And above the toilet was the baby change facility. I didn't find any in there today but um, the table was nice and clean which was good to see. And the toilet area was reasonably clean for this particular point in the journey. And also, there's another alarm call button near the floor, uh, just in case of any serious problems regarding slips, trips and falls. A couple of co-tooks uh, complete this tour, and yeah, I was, I was very happy with the toilet provision on this train. It's certainly one of the better ones that I've seen recently.
oh well, we were approaching Leeds by this point. Um, and a total journey time of 2 hours and 17 minutes for this section, uh, covering a total distance of 82 miles. And now as promised, I will reveal how much I paid for this trip, and yeah, it was a grand total of, well, one pound. Uh, yes, really. Uh, and that was courtesy of uh, one of the Northern's flash sales, uh, which everybody should look out for, by the way. They're fairly infamous, and um, I would definitely recommend in the future. Uh, the journey would normally cost around £12 for an adult single fare anyway, uh, which I don't think is bad value, uh, but this £1 sale obviously made it even more satisfying. Um, do you know any other train operating companies that do this? Um, well, please let me know in the comments below if you do. Okay guys, I'm in Leeds. I've just got here on the CAF 195 Northern trains uh, from Chester. And yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, it's quite a nice ride. That um, it was nice inside, nice and clean. Friendly staff as well. Sort of big shout out to the guard on my train. It was great to meet him. And um, yeah, I, overall I thought it was, it was a pretty good, pretty good service. So thank you very much for watching. And until the next time, guys. Cheers for now.